Shocking news today for Charlotte FC fans as coach Miguel Angel Ramirez fired just before 9 a.m. 14 matches into the team's inaugural season. Here to talk about it is MLS insider for MLSsoccer.com, Tom Bogert. Tom, I know you were just as shocked as all of us down here in Charlotte about the news. Yeah, I wake up, you know, I was, you know, coming out of the holiday weekend trying to not be on my phone in the morning or whatever. And, and I turned it on and I got a text like, hey, like, are you around? There's a press conference about uh, to talk about Miguel Ramirez. I was like, did something happen? And then, like opened my phone. I was like, oh, my God, he got fired. What? <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely a big shock. Yeah, this team seems to be punching above its weight so far, you know, a little less than halfway through the first season, right in the thick of the playoff hunt. I mean, it's early. And playing better than a lot of us thought they would, a lot more competitive than a lot of us thought they would. So how much does this have to do with, we, we know Ramirez has publicly and privately pushed for better, better, better. And he, he's admittedly kind of, you know, somebody who pushes. How much does that have to do with this? Um, I don't know how much I want to speculate, I guess, before mm -hmm. um, it's talking yeah. about, but from, from what I know from, from sources, I think I'll just put it this way, you know, you don't fire an expansion coach after 14 games and 16 points for performance-based reasons. That's kind of, you know, the conventional wisdom. And that's how it's been explained to me when I've asked around at like just a simple question of what the hell happened here. Look, he, um, even before he came out with the worst screwed quote, which to be certain was pretty shocking to the people at the club. They, they didn't see it that way. It was, um, you know, they, the roster build was coming a little slow, but, uh, they they didn't get the feeling that Miguel thought the team was screwed. And then all of a sudden he's give like, I heard that that day, that press conference ran late, you know, the, yeah. the clubs gave him the opportunity to, Hey man, like you've done 30 minutes. Like you don't have to keep talking. And he's like, no, I, I'm, I'm taking all questions. So it seemed like he went to that press conference with the agenda to maybe uh, put that quote out there. But yeah, I, I had heard kind of, even before that, there were kind of chasms between the relationship of, of Miguel and the club. And like you said, he's somebody who, pushes and he's, he's definitely a big personality um and and that's why he's been successful in his career but that's also kind of why for the most part he hasn't lasted all that long at club so i mean it's it's entirely shocking but but i was talking to another ex an executive at, at a different club when miguel had the worst group quote and the, the executive texted me he said he's on the clock now like he, he's gonna get fired soon and i was like he he's a really well thought of coach he just got hired and he's like no you go tell me how many times you can publicly talk bad about your boss or your, or, or your organization and see how long you last at. And I was like, all right, if you say so. So I had already gotten a text from him being like, yep, told you so. This isn't surprising. Well, I mean, and, and, you know, I know coming into the MLS, I was told, you know, coaches, they don't last long. I mean, David Tepper, the owner has a football coach going on year three and, and we won't obviously dive into that <laughs> with you. Fan, fans want to all day, but I mean, it, it still seems like such a short tenure. And I think moving forward, you know, fans are excited about a team and we're excited about seeing a team this summer that was really competitive. How do you think this could, could, I mean, it's a pivotal point basically for this, for this team in year one now. Look, not great. Um, I, I really like a number of the pieces that this team has. Um, I, I like, you know, the foundation, like they were pretty, clear about wanting to bid build through kind of central midfield and central defense. And, and that's kind of where the team started, but the, the whole benefit and the whole point of having a coach hired as early or as early ish as they did, or knowing what they wanted is then the rest of the roster build. First of all, you, the coach has to green light the moves, whether he's the one driving the signings or not. Like you, you don't sign a player that the coach doesn't want. It just doesn't happen or that player is not going to get played. And it's just an awful decision. So all of these signings were made through the lens of, if it wasn't somebody necessarily that Miguel really, really wanted, it, it wasn't somebody he, he just wanted. These are players that were identified for say hype, like not using specific examples, but let's say Miguel said, I want wingers that are, that can cut in from the left and, and be goal dangerous on the right, rather than say a different head coach might say, I, I want a left footed left winger who can kind of stretch the field and all this. So the preference comes to the playing style. So that's what like they, they need to be, as long as there's some sort of continuity, obviously, no, no matter who comes in, whether it's the interim coach or, or the next full time coach, there will be differences. But LAFC have done this well in they have kind of club identity. So when Steve Trondo took over for Bob Bradley, he wasn't the same, but he had similar principles. So I, like they need to be deliberate about 
who takes over. And again, whether the interim coach does it for the rest of the season or, or has a chance at a full-time job, or if they go with somebody from externally, they need somebody to match the players on this roster. Or you look at what happened to FC Cincinnati. You look at what happened to Inter Miami. They've been bad for years because they had coaching changes and different front offices and, and different philosophies all kind of converging. And the roster is just kind of in shambles because of it. So Christian Latanzio is going to be the interim coach. They hold on to the keepers coach, but you know, an, an assistant coach, head fitness coach, a video analyst, all gone structurally, you know, how can this team just kind of piece things together in the near term? And then when you have a coach that's fired this earlier in this early in the season, what, what have you seen in the past in terms of the coaching search and, and will that happen this season? Will it happen in the off season? In, in your opinion, before we hear from sporting director Zoran Cornetta. Yeah. I mean, he's Cornetta in the front office are really well connected in the, the, in world football. And I'd imagine that they have some ideas. They just did this. They, they were doing their coaching search as if they were going to be ready to enter the league in 2021 before they got pushed back. So they had different targets at that time. And I was told a couple of their finalists ended up getting different jobs that they were looking at for 2021. So then for 2022, whoever the other finalists were with Miguel, I'm sure those are the first people that they might talk to. And, and again, I don't know who they are and, and what their current situations are, but they, it's like the third year in a row that they're conducting a coaching search in the summer. And I think that they'll have a lot of fresh faces from that and, and other targets kind of emerge. But from what I've been told from other clubs, you know, the sporting director gets, you know, reached out to by a hundred agents and and representatives for a hundred coaches around the world. Like these are, these are jobs that people want, you know, not the best coaches in the world, obviously the ones that are, you know, destined for the top of the champions league, but look like Miguel Ramirez was a really well thought of coach. He could have gotten a bigger job in South America or a bigger job in Europe. So I don't think that they're going to be short for options. Um, I'd imagine they're going to take their time and, and we'll see kind of how it goes in the short term. And that might determine what the urgency is as to whether play it out, play out the season under an interim basis or kind of try to find the next person. Tom Bogert's Tuesday went from quiet to crazy, just like all of ours down here. Thanks for joining us on short notice, Tom. Cheers.